What is up? It's Jan back at it again with another nerdy bookish video. This is gonna be my first unhaul of 2022. Yes, it's September. Yes, I have a problem. This probably won't be the only unhaul in the next few months though because I have already sold books on Pango and I need to make room for new books because I'm breaking my book buying ban soon. By the time this is up, I don't know if I would have already broken it. So <laughs> look out for a book haul soon as well. I think I'm gonna make this a Booktober video. So day whatever of Booktober, hello. Welcome to an unhaul. Like I said, I did make a Pango account recently. Finally started listing books yesterday yesterday and I already sold a bunch so I'm gonna finish listing these but just so y'all know some of these are already sold either way I'm gonna tell y'all why I'm getting rid of these books so maybe that'll gauge whether or not you want to read these books or whatever I don't know who am I for you to trust right but this is what's happening my pango is always linked down below in the description ever since I made it at least so a couple months now we have a lot of books like I said there's probably gonna be another unhaul sometime soon possibly soon meaning months from now probably 2023 but still, let's just get right on into it because I want to be productive tonight. This light is so harsh. All right, the first one may or may not be a surprise to y'all, but I did give this book two stars. It was a highly anticipated 2022 release, but alas. I'm getting rid of Gallant. Some of these books are also annotated and I do indicate whether it's lightly annotated or just annotated. None of these are really heavily annotated in my opinion because heavily annotated to me is like my favorite books of all time where the tabs are like every other page, right? There aren't too many tabs and I have some like some... Body once told me the word. I have some writing in the margins, just like a few words here and there. I have some blue highlighter throughout. But yeah, I gave this two stars. I wasn't expecting Addie LaRue. Do not get me wrong. Y'all know Addie LaRue is part of my brand. I have six copies of it, even though I've only read it one and a half times, but I'm still super obsessed with it. And I was not expecting that from this. I had lower expectations for this because I know V.E. Schwab purposely writes for a different audience for each of their books. I was just expecting a better experience like it was eerie but it was very it just read too juvenile for me i heard the audiobook is good though i did read it fully physically and i did enjoy the illustrations throughout but the overall story with like her finding her mom's letters and then going to this magical place that was like forbidden or whatever i don't know and the cover is so cool though i mean if you like like the secret garden i've heard is compared to this a lot. If you like that, if you like middle grade, this read like a middle grade to me, but I believe it's young adult. If you like like whimsical middle grade like that, I think you'd like this book. This is pretty good for spooky season in my opinion. It did have a few good lines here and there. I couldn't tell you much about it, honestly. There were some parts where I was like, okay, Addie LaRue. Like there were some of the same themes kind of, or like undertones if you really thought about it, but the illustrations, like I said, are beautiful. And that's like all throughout. That's gonna be on there and it's in great condition. I only read it once, so there's that. And then this, I haven't read at all. I just have two copies and I got my paperback version from Sharni for, was it my birthday last year? I think so. So obviously I'm keeping that one as a gift. And then I have this one, the hardcover of Middle Game by Sean and McGuire. Like I said, I haven't read it yet, but these are so expensive on Amazon even. This one retails for $30, but I got it for super cheap. So I decided to keep the one I was gifted because as y'all know, I don't get rid of gifts. But yeah, this is about these twins and there's a lot of chess involved. I heard this has a really good story to it and it's dark. This is the author of Every Heart a Doorway, the Wayward Children series. The next book is the Poetry Collection by Halsey and this one is annotated lightly. I say all my thoughts about the poems. I got this from a Barnes & Noble sale. I read it once. I mean, I love Halsey as a person. Their poetry, it's all right. I mean, yeah, I'm never gonna reread it. So I'm just gonna get rid of it for someone else who's probably a bigger fan of Halsey than I am and would appreciate their writing more than I did. Some of them were really similar to Halsey's songs, like song lyrics. So I was just like, okay, we get it. You write songs, you know? It just wasn't my preference in the poetry genre, <laughs> if that makes sense. This I have not read, got it pretty cheap. Actually, I think I got this for free, but <laughs> Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. I've heard very problematic things about this author. As soon as I held this up when I bought this, everyone was like, jam. No, do not read it. So the only reason I was interested in it is because of the cover. Like, I don't think I even read the synopsis. Oh, Gothic. I saw Gothic and I was like, all right, sick. 
But yep, getting rid of this. The spine creeps me out anyway. The rest of the spine is pretty cool. This book I read once in five years by Rebecca Searle. I'm in love with this cover. I'm a hoe for gold foiling. This one, I didn't even annotate. Like this was pre-annotating Jan. But I remember this was one of the first books I read at my previous apartment on my balcony. So that's a moment. I don't have a balcony anymore and I miss it. But I remember this being quite emotional. But it's about this woman who is very like type A, plans everything out, sticks to a schedule has a routine things like that everything I aspire to be was once was but not anymore and I aspire to go back to that she basically has the next five years planned so one day she wakes up in five years she sees the things that happen things don't go the way she planned and then you can kind of see where it's going from there but it has like some heavy topics discussed some heavy situations beware of that or is it this one? I think it is this one. I always get this mixed up with One Day in December, but they're pretty similar. So if you liked One Day in December, you'll probably like this. I did enjoy this. I think I gave this four stars and it's super short too. So I know I won't reread it. It's time to go. I don't really think about it anymore. So this one was a huge disappointment for me, but I know other people will enjoy it because it's dark academia, sapphic, YA. There's a lot of good rep in here. The Grimrose Girls by Laura Pohl. Yeah, so this one is annotated and I read this in 24 hours. I was highly anticipating this, but then when I read it, I was like, wow, that's it. Like it was kind of mediocre. It's supposed to be like this dark fairy tale retelling at this boarding school and about this group of girls who figure out that the murders that took place in this school were all kind of like reimaginings of dark fairy tales, hence the Grimm and Grimrose. <laughs> so the premise is so cool. And like I said, like the rep in this, like there's demi rep, I think there's bi rep, there's a sapphic relationship somewhere i think and even in like different body sizes and nationalities the diversity is there and i really like the diversity in the characters personalities as well because when especially when it's like a group of the same age range the same type of people like this is a group of girls who go to the same school you know like that gets confusing unless you have distinct personalities and this one does the job but I still gave it three stars because it was very lackluster for me the twist reveal whatever it didn't shock me someone will enjoy this it was not me the cover is cool though and i know the second one came out maybe i'll continue wait did the second one come out i don't even know if i do read the sequel it will be from the library mark my words another sapphic ya dark academia that was very much a disappointment is a lesson in vengeance by victoria lee victoria lee is a trans author so i was super excited to be reading this and i read it in like 27 hours i think the cover is literally stunning everything i want in a cover right only thing missing are bats but you go into it hoping there's all this magic and there's just not it talks about like the potential of magic and like your personal potential and how magic doesn't have to be magic to be magic like you just have to look within like all that shit just go into that knowing that and you won't be disappointed unlike me who went into this hoping for all the freaking like witchiness and people casting spells and shit in this dark academia story where there's a murder and girls in freaking plaid skirts and writing until there's no tomorrow and shit like that yes they have those pretentious characters i remember this girl ellis haley's in here and she's like the enigma of the school and she's this prodigious prodigious i feel like i feel in deja vu i've had this conversation with myself while filming before is it prodigious a very talented writer in her time in this book and she's super young see i can't even remember things but i did not like ellis haley as much as other people did who have read this book i don't know i thought she was annoying i thought a lot of these characters were annoying the story was annoying i just wanted it to end but it is annotated so you can see my negative thoughts progress throughout the story <laughs> this is a classic dear john by nicholas sparks <laughs> I read this once, so I used to be obsessed with Nicholas Sparks books. I've read all of them up to his like newer ones. I think the newest release that I read by him was The Longest Ride, and then that's when I stopped reading him. I know some of y'all wanted a Nicholas Sparks vlog to see if I still like get, get captivated by his stories, but maybe one day, we'll see. Dear John, I did like the movie better than the book. This is one of those rare instances where the movie was better in my opinion. Military guy falls in love with girl, someone dies eventually, that's the formula for every Nicholas Sparks book, so that is not a spoiler, okay? That's a dog barking. I love Amanda Seyfried. Say, Seyfried? 
Do I say that right? I always question myself when I say her name. Maybe that's partly why I like the movie better. Channing Tatum, not so much. I'm one of those, I don't really like Channing Tatum, but the movie was still better. I do maybe want to watch it again. It did make me cry. This did not make me cry. It's there, the movie cover and everything in all its glory. This is super old too. My friend Allison gave this to me. I think I read like half of it. So, oh my God, she has her name in it. That's awkward. And there's pen marks on the front too, but it's schooled by Gordon Corman. I remember seeing this everywhere when I was in middle school and it's about this like hippie family or whatever. He lived on a farm commune and being homeschooled by his hippie grandmother, Rain. And so it's this kid who's like adjusting to a new school and things and it's a coming of age story, but I've had it on my shelves for too long and I know I'm not gonna read it. So sorry, Allison, if you have happen to be watching this. I don't know, she's an IRL friend, so not many of those watch my videos, but we're gonna get rid of that. It's time to put this in someone else's hands. I don't know who's gonna buy it because I didn't even notice her name was in there until just now but that's so cute. <laughs> this one I haven't even touched because I do have two copies of it. The New Girl by Jesse Q. Satanto, who's the author of Dial A for Aunties. So I have a high hopes for this one. This is a YA thriller about a new girl in school and there's a dead girl discovered in the classroom and they try to figure out what's going on. I have the ARC version. Obviously you can't sell ARCs. So I'm getting rid of this one to make room in my shelves. I still plan on reading this eventually though, but this is a brand new finished copy. Next, another Nicholas Sparks book, a mass market market paperback version of The Guardian. This one I actually enjoyed and I think I almost cried too. Cause as you can see, there's a dog and dogs mean emotional. Whoa. I honestly don't remember what this is about. I'm not even gonna read any of the synopsis for this. Just know it's there and I'm getting rid of it because I think the only Nicholas Sparks I'm keeping is Wait, did I get rid of that too? I think I got rid of all my Nicholas Sparks books. That sounds about right. Because I'm also getting rid of The Last Song. This is also the movie version. This one was one of my favorite Nicholas Sparks books, but it's time. I'm not gonna reread it. I'll watch the movie if I want to experience it again. Because I really did like the movie, okay? Judge me, I don't give a fuck. This one, I've never read. I think I got it from a library sale years and years ago. It's called Ink and Bone by Rachel Kane. I've had it for literal years, probably like high no, probably like early college. It's just a bookish book about this library, the great library. Jess Brightwell believes in the value of the library, but the majority of his knowledge comes from illegal books obtained by his family. Jess has been sent to be his family's spy, but his loyalties are tested in the final months of his training to enter the library's service. So it's like this mysterious library thing with a family who has all these things going on. Jess discovers that those who control the great library believe knowledge is more valuable than any human life. And soon both heretics and books will burn. It does sound intriguing, but if I do ever plan on reading it, I'll just get it from the library. It's a very backlisted book. It's, it's a whole series, I think. So yeah, this is the first one in the series. <gasps> Do I have the second one too? I could have sworn I got the second one somewhere. I don't know. Best-selling author of the Morganville Vampires novels. Has anyone read those? All right, this one is another one where I have two copies of, I'm gonna get rid of the finished copy since I'm not gonna get rid of the arc. My Dearest Darkest by Kayla Cottingham. This I have yet to read. It's a YA sapphic dark academia again. That would make for a good vlog for those three that I'm getting rid of. Anyway, this one sounds really interesting. I know a lot of people have enjoyed this. I know a couple people who didn't though, but. I know this has all like the gothic YA horror thriller vibes just from the cover. One night Finch, Selena, and their friends accidentally summon a creature of immense power in the depths of the school. It promises to grant every desire the girls have kept locked away in their insecure hearts. Beauty, power, adoration in exchange for a price. But as the cost of their wanting becomes more deadly, Finch and Selena must learn to work together to stop the horror they've unleashed before it consumes the entire island. Like that sounds... My toilet just loves to interrupt my videos. Like why? People call it my haunted toilet. <laughs> That's kind of fucking scary actually. I hate bathroom scenes. I just got chills thinking about that. Nope, nope. It was funny and cute at first. Now it's not. This one is just highlighted. The Kingdom of Bach by Marie Lu. The Kingdom of Bach, I don't know. This cover is so gorgeous. And honestly, the story is really cool as well. This is a historical fiction featuring Mozart and how he became a child prodigy. It also revolves around his sister who is not as well known. And it talks about how their parents treated them, all the hours of practice they had to go through. And then there's this magical world, the kingdom of back. And then there's this like sinister creature. I mean, it was a cool story. I just remember it taking me way too long to finish and it's not memorable to me. I, I realized throughout my years of reading that I'm not a fan of books about music. I don't know what it is with the exception of Daisy Jones and the Six. It's 
Taylor Jenkins read is was amazing. Her most recent two books can't say the same, but we're just gonna hope that she goes back. We'll just we'll just hope this is a phase. But anyway, I also still want to read our Savage Song and our my this Savage Song and our Dark Duet by V. E. Schwab. All the other music related books that I've read, I haven't been into, and this is one of them. I think I gave this like three stars, maybe four. The writing was good. This is the one and only Marie Lu book that I've read. I feel like the world was easy to follow, and it is very whimsical, and it was interesting to read the story of Mozart, as real as it can get, I guess, in a historical fiction, but getting rid of that because I'm never gonna read this again. I'm getting rid of the last time I lied by Riley Sager. As you can tell from my lack of tabs, I just did not care. I read this from my Riley Sager vlog. I'll link that down below for you to hear my thoughts. Basically, I couldn't get through this without the audiobook. I just needed that extra push to finish it for that vlog. I didn't like the twist. I got bored. This was not my favorite Riley Sager. This is the book of the month edition. I do like that back cover. I'm getting very lightly annotated. Another Riley Sager I'm getting rid of is Survive the Night. This one is a little more heavily annotated. I did guess the twist on page 13 that I guessed the twist on. It was something really early. It was either 26 or 13. Ooh, page 21. I'm gonna scratch that out just in case someone buys this and accidentally spoils themselves. Hold on. Yeah, page 21, I guess who the killer is. So that could tell you how well this went. I did really like the ending. I gave this a much higher rating than a lot of other people. I might have given this four stars. It was either a three or four. I think it was a four because of the ending. I really liked how he did that at the end if you know you know but the story itself was so like predictable and every time i talk about this book i think of mckay saying it's only set in the 90s because they were playing nirvana the whole time and <laughs> so that the bitch doesn't have a phone <laughs> and if the bitch had a phone everything would be solved there would be no story so yeah that's what i always think of when i talk about this and mckay is not wrong that's all i'm saying that's going in the pile everything is fucked by mark manson this is the same author as the subtle art of not giving a fuck which is my favorite self-help book of all time. I've read that twice. I recommend it to everyone. I think it's the first book that Joey has ever read like since he met me and he loved it and it got him into reading. I love that book. This one, I didn't get much out of like whatsoever. I had no desire to reread it at all. I'm just gonna get rid of it. I mean, I'm sure someone else could get more out of it than I have, so so be it. This one is another one from Allison, actually. She was just getting rid of it, so I was like, okay, let's try this one out. But I've never had a desire to touch it. The Secret Lives of Dresses by Erin McKean. No idea what it's about. I was intrigued by the title and the cover because I thought it would give like small town vibes. Her grandmother's vintage clothing store. Dora makes a curious discovery. Mimi had been secretly writing down and giving away stories about the dresses in her shop. Soon the clothes, her grandmother's legacies, and a handsome young contract named Conrad begin to make her wonder. She can trade her boring clothes for vintage glamour, but can she trade her boring life for one she actually wants? I don't know, it seemed like a good like coming of age type of story. I just don't need it on my shelves. If it comes around again eventually, then maybe I'll read it for something, but I don't know, like the premise? sounds like something i would like if the writing lived up to it but i don't know i just don't need it right now okay so that's going in there ah uh, this one i feel so bad getting rid of i just tabbed it so i took out all the tabs but i feel bad because my mom gave it to me she gave it to me as a halloween gift and i'll never forget my surprise when she got me a halloween gift she never does that but i just wanted to show you the naked cover because it's cute like I said, a hoe for foiling. Especially gold, but blue's cool too. A Fable by Adrienne Young. If you know me, I don't like books revolving around water, set on water, about water. Like, this is a pirate book, essentially. She's on a ship finding things out about her past and her family and everything. She has this, like, spunky attitude. The cover is stunning. I think I liked her as a character. I don't remember. I think I, yeah. I wasn't a fan of the setting and the overall story and it was kind of repetitive at times. I'm really sad about it though, but my mom also got me Northanger Abbey. North, Northanger? Why can't I say anything right the first time? I don't know, the one, that one, the classic by Jane Austen. The small one. <laughs> fuck was that? I don't know. I have one book from that moment, from that gift package at least. So, dude, 
literally my toilet needs to stop. Another one I have is Bitters the New Black. I think this is a memoir by Jen Lancaster. This is not a memoir I'm interested in anymore. It says, Confessions of a Condescending, Egomaniacal, Self-Centered Smartass, or Why You Should Never Carry a Prada Bag to the Unemployment Office. This is the story of how a haughty former sorority girl went from having a household income of almost a quarter million dollars to being evicted from a ghetto apartment. Yeah, it just doesn't sound like my cup of tea anymore. Hopefully someone thinks otherwise. And then the very last book, in this unhaul is No Exit by Taylor Adams. I read it, I watched the movie, I recommend it to several people. I talked about the trigger warnings and the racism and I annotated it and it's going away now. I've watched the movie twice. I've just, I know this story front and back. I'm over it. I don't need it on my shelves anymore. It's the book of the month edition, but I think I got it from Half Price Books. And that's that on that. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. I've experienced that story too many times. And that is all. Those are all my books that I am currently getting rid of. Didn't make too much of a difference on my shelves, but you know, what can you do? <laughs> if you made it to the end of this video let's put like any type of pirate emoji in the comments down below to represent fable because this is the one i'm most guilty about getting rid of i know i said i don't get rid of gifts but like like for my mom she gives me so many things you know like that's different and allison she also gave me other ones that i have kept in terms of like subscribers and internet people and from like my significant other and yeah i keep those gifts but any who. Thank you so much for watching. If you want more content from me, I now also have a Patreon, which is always linked down below. Please join the lair if you are so inclined to <laughs> get more spooky-ish content from me, more lifestyle-based content. So it's like another side, less bookish, but also bookish of <laughs> Oh my God. You'll see another part of my life that's sometimes less bookish and whatever, that's all there. We have monthly 24 hour readathons, we have a bunch of buddy reads in the Discord. It's a good time at the lair. So, like I said, it's always linked down below. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Hope y'all had a great day. Stay safe, stay positive, and stay spooky. And I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye!